All right. Thanks, Trevor. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give the talk while the presentation is over there so I can see the chat screen. So if you see me looking in weird directions, that's OK. So <clears throat> my name is Alan, and I'm going to give a talk about CAS and how to make Yocto manageable. I work as an external consultant for Mendra at the moment in the pre-sales process with customer engineering, trying to streamline that and make it uh, improve it. OK, so what this talk is going to be about, we're going to start with a short overview of what CAS is and, and its bread and butter, and then a, simple, uh, a use case of how it's being used in customer engineering in Mender, a short conclusion then, and if time permits, a little Q&A. Also, you might be seeing, I, I usually play with this little ball, and I just realized Sorry, I'm diverging a bit to promote Yocto uh, stuff. How great it would be to have one of these, you know, the marketing gadgets, there are t-shirts and fidget spinners. And imagine like having this flowing all around in Yocto colors. That'd be cool. Okay, back to the presentation. So what is CAS? No, oh, no, sorry. What, what, what the presentation won't be about, I will not be comparing it to other tools. So the, two, the other, approaches that one can take to solve some of the problems I will be talking about is to use the flow base and git sub modules or to use the repo tool. I have tried them a bit. None of them left such a, a, a eureka kind of uh, moment for me as, uh, as CAS. So I'm just gonna show you why I found CAS very, very good and you can decide for yourself on how that compares to other Flows. <clears throat> okay, so what is CAS? The official definition of CAS is set up tool for bit bake based projects. That's what is written in the GitHub repository. And I kind of tried to put it in a more street talk. So it's, it's a thing that helps you build an image with Yocto from a blank slate in less steps or a Python wrapper for reducing the number of steps in a Yocto workflow. And what is going to be the general theme of, of, of this presentation is reducing the scope of the space of possibilities of everything that Yocto gives to something which is more focused and, and uh, more niche. There was the, that movie, uh, I, I noted er everything everywhere all at once that was in the previous talk. So we want to reduce from that to somebody just a bit and only for a short period of time. So <clears throat> that is the definition of, of CAS. Why would you use it on a higher level? You would try to pitch it to somebody who is having problems because there is just too much uh, steps going on if you do things manually. So in terms of the actual project, it's an open source project started by Siemens. And it seems healthy. If you go, if you take a look at what's going on in GitHub, there are a few commits a week, given that it's just a wrapper around the big project. I would say that's good enough. There is a reasonably healthy open to close ratio for the PRs and issues. I kind of just manually calculated that to, to get just a rough impression. And the docs are living within the code, which I always find that something that's, well, that it has been architectured well, so the changes to the code can also be followed with the changes to the docs. <clears throat> it's a Python CLI application that you would install like any other Python application. In this case, I usually install it by just cloning the latest version and then running pip install dot that installs it in my global kind of Python uh, uh, main space. It's also possible to do acrobatics with uh, what is called virtual end. And I saw in the code there is an option to use it containerized. I haven't really gone with that because uh, I didn't need to. It was working well enough natively and I didn't need the added complexity of containers. That is the next step. And I'm glad to see that there are some promises that that already works. It's just me not knowing it. OK, <clears throat> so let's, let's try to expand a bit now on, on the unofficial definition. Right? So CAS is a tool that helps us do stuff with Yocto in less steps. So, so where does, where does the, the next, where does, how, does, how do we achieve 
less debt, right? There's no, no free lunch. You always have to pay for it uh, somehow. Uh, I think there was a comment that, yes, there are multiple people confirming that it's working with uh, in a container also. So well, how do you, with what do you have to pay this reduction of having less steps to execute? And you're basically paying it by introducing that part, that information into a config file. So <clears throat> let's try to examine how, how, does, how does that look like compared to the manual flow? So the hand represents me trying to be artistic, representing the manual flow. So assuming that you are going to do Yocto step by step, you first have to clone all of the repositories that contain the layers that you're going to work with. So you have to go get clone this, get clone that. You have to define some kind of a folder structure of how your project is going to work with. If you have to check out specific branches, you have to do also that. And you're manually doing that by typing git clone a lot of times. Uh, the cast equivalent of that is specifying the config, putting the config, the, that information into the config file, and then running cast checkout. And the result is the same. The result is the same. The layers repository gets cloned. Then cast also has a convenient command called cast shell. And how do we get to the equivalent of running cast shell? Is once we have cloned the repository, we have to source the build environment and then maybe set up if, if we don't have any other measures in pl place we have to manually set up a local conf or we need to add the layers to our build environment so cast shell helps us do that by providing an equivalent of that with a single command and again a configuration file that contains uh, that data I, I will soon show the the configuration the, the, the content of the configuration file in the upcoming slides. And also the, the last thing that you would do then if you were doing things manually, that in, a, in, a, uh, in an initialized environment, you would run bit bake and then build the image or whatever recipe, execute whatever recipe or task you want. And cast build in this case will be an equivalent of running that and it will provide, as a result, you will get Ryokuto artifacts. So one thing that isn't really obvious, uh, oh, there is a comment, sorry. It would be nice to hear also from Siemens, the inventor of CAS. So the what I haven't really, now that I look at it, uh, drawn here nicely is that the CAS commands, they're not interdependent between each other. There is a kind of a, a dependency you have to first check out shell build, but you can just run build directly and it will automatically execute all the stuff, as which isn't the case uh, with manual steps. Okay, and so what is this magical config that we have to, uh, that will contain all this stuff that is, that, is, that is protecting us from the complexity of running all these steps manually one after another? <clears throat> well, it's basically the content of which repos are we going to, from where are we going to clone the layers from, which are the repositories that, that we need to clone from, and what are the layers that are actually going to be used. Do we want to add some custom stuff in DB layers, or do we want to add some custom stuff in local conf? And there is a set of miscellaneous where, because some commands are more equal than others, like machine or distro. But the gist are these three sections. Okay, <clears throat> and one of the one of the features of of uh, cat. Whoop. Sorry about that. One of the features of the cast config file is the ability to include one config into another, and this basically means in this case if we have config y and we have config x, if we have con included config y into config sorry if we have included config x into config y, the result of the flattened config y will contain the stuff from config x. And this is fun because we can do that also, we can do that within the config, and we can also do it through the command line, allowing us to do some interest, it provides the infrastructure to do some interesting things. All right, Cassie Mender, let me just see what is the time. 
Okay, so uh, I do have an explicit, how do you call it? Uh, um, I have to say that there, uh, I have to announce a, a trigger alert. So there might be some disturbing misuses of Jokto best practices that have been done either out of ignorance or deliberately all for the sake of reaching the most simplest possible list of steps to achieve a niche goal, right? Back to the, to the theme of, of the presentation, reducing a set of, of all possibilities to only the ones that, that make sense. Okay, so having said that, let's dive in. Uh, so what are the requirements in vendor customer engineering when it relates to Yocto and building stuff? So we have to build images for multiple different hardwares, and this is not this is not for the reason of creating production releases. It's just replicating customer issues, and it's of, the focus is often on just changing a single version of an application and quickly building. Uh, and we also have to Sometimes we must uh, embrace the entire complexity of what Yocto provides and just go and debug Yocto issues for certain boards. So building multiple images for different hardware is kind of a thing that Yocto praises itself uh, for. In this particular case, I have achieved that with uh, CAS instead of Yocto, but Josef the Yocto gesture has a really nice talk, I believe, or had where this, there is, this can be achieved by following Yocto best practices. So rephrased, the, these, these requirements are a bit rephrased. I want a, a, a minimum config and command overhead to build images because building images is not really what I care about. I care about having the images built and then testing, testing the stuff. Mm, local conf doesn't really change much once it's set. So, Local conf is something which will be kind of a, a semi-permanent configuration file. So the thing, the thing that is in the layers, that's permanent and, and we don't change that. The things which is in local conf, it's kind of semi-permanent. Set it once, once you're setting the build environment and then don't touch it, uh, don't touch it a lot. And then there will be a new kind of non-permanent, change it for every build if you need to kind of configuration that I will introduce soon. And I also want to be able to simply reach all the artifacts once they are built. So that's one point. These three points represent kind of a single group, which is I want to reduce complexities, give me the, the least amount of steps to get the job done. And the other requirement is, well, if something isn't working, I want to very quickly go away from that abstraction and just dive into regular bitback environment with all the context set. So <clears throat> how does this look like when everything is configured? It looks like this. So it's basically two, three and a half lines of commands. These, these, these little things or these little uh, scripts are just basically my very thin wrappers around CAS that I have introduced to be able to do an implicit, uh, an implicit kind of environmental variable ways development workflow. And I'm going to explain that in a bit. But the idea is that this hopefully looks fairly simple to start with and fairly simple to get into an environment if you need to actually work with PDP. So what does configuring it mean? Just to, just to over communicate. Most of the things here heavily rely on CAS. So the commands that are, I'm using as wrappers are basically CAS with very small uh, extra handling. So what, what is the structure to achieve this kind of niche flow? Well, one is there is a configuration file for the Diablo configuration file for CAS, which eventually becomes the content of uh, local conf. And it contains all the repos that the board will need together with the layers that will be used. And that is set once. You set it once to set the S states, and you set it, for example, to set the particular keys, mender server, and, and things that you don't really change you know, in regards to between different builds. Now, the 
non-permanent, the change me every time before a build config file is the auto.conf. And this might be a, a little misuse. Well, technically auto.conf is, I believe, used for, auto, for the config that is set from an automated something. And in which case, my scripts are automating auto.conf. But this was, this was deliberately misused just for the sake of providing a simple enough interface that looks like local conf. And it's simpler to document changes in a file that just has key value pairs instead of documenting how to, uh, instead of writing copy pasteable documentation for editing a YAML file, right? So the benefits for this are still questionable. I still am exploring to see if I can drop that particular approach, because what, what's happening here is that the helper script will always be copying autoconf into the BitBake environment so that once you're there, you have both local conf that cast change together with autoconf that was that is kind of the, the user uh, configuration file. I don't know what, what, what the future will be. I might actually kill that and just find a way to uh, nicely add copy pasteable change a YAML through bash uh, command line documentation. Okay, so what is this? What is the command line? What is the, the YAML config that CAS is actually using? Well, it's not basically, it's not a one command. It's uh, actually multiple config files that we mentioned that, that CAS uh, allows. So it's a config file that the user sets initially. So S state caches, and mender specific configs that are valid for all images. And there is a board agnostic stuff, which are some kind of helper, helper installation. Sorry. Helper recipes and, and stuff. And then there are board specific configuration files, right? So you might also see here that I'm kind of reinventing the wheel a bit. So instead of using machine layers, I'm kind of putting the mach the 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 purpose of machine, the, the purpose of the concept of machine layers into the CAS configuration file, because it felt, I guess, two reasons for that. One, because it felt more intuitive that both the layers and the changes that should go with those layers should exist in a single file, instead of having to manually clone the layer from somewhere, um, for example, a machine one, and then uh, getting the config from there. And the the other reason was a perceived, uh, uh, I perceived it to be simpler to use this kind of approach if I inherit layers from different machines. So if the machine layer wasn't written in the best possible way, I kind of found it simpler to just modify it to my needs by using a cast config instead of creating an added a, 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 a Yocto layer on top of that machine layer to kind of make it prettier. And underneath cast shell and cast checkout, as again, just everything that I have been talking about the custom command, they're basically cast shell and cast checkout. All right, and this was also, so, so this comes now to the point, to the second point where I said, yes, I want to reduce to the least possible number of steps, but I also want to have a cheap, a very an effortless way to get to a build environment that contains all the environment that is happening in my automated steps. And this is cast shell, which is a wrapper around cast shell, just a very simple bash script. So why another, why a wrapper around the wrapper? One thing is to propagate the autoconf, which was the questionable decision that I still have to decide for, uh, decide on. And, and the other was, well, basically to, 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 to be able to, offer this kind of uh, uh, implicit development uh, flow in a sense. So instead of, so what, is it, what does it mean implicit development flow? It means that instead of having to call the actual cast shell and then passing flags to it to go into the bit bake environment, I'm choosing to take the flow where you set the developer environment once saying, hey, I want to work on the Raspberry Pi 3. And then all commands that I will execute there are related to my Raspberry Pi 3. And this is, I would dare say that this is a horrible anti-pattern to use in software development, where you're kind of uh, de uh, depending on states. 
and kind of magical uh, background uh, conditions. But for a CLI tool, it reduces cognitive load and, and feels kind of intuitive to me. Okay, and additional, do I, one last thing related to the possibility for CAS to extend configuration through the command line. I showed you before that it's possible for CAS configurations to include, to include one another, but it's also possible to achieve that from the command line. So what we are doing here is we're basically saying, hey, why don't you just flatten these two into one? And the, the, this uh, infrastructure, right, this feature provides the possibility to uh, start treating Mender features as CAS YAML files. So sometimes to enable a certain Mender feature, it takes maybe six or seven lines of code. And instead of having to manually put that into local conf or figuring out how to create a recipe of that for that, and then building it individually, this just allows treating the configuration as a feature. So there is an environmental variable, which will just say, hey, why don't you append these feature config files to the current environment? And automatically then they will find their way into the local conf of the build environment. Oh, checking out if there are any questions. Oh, there's a lot going on. I will have to check out uh, later. So uh, how does that look as the end result? So on the left side, and you don't have to be able to see the this entire text, is an example of what would a readme file look like if one is to go the step by step. One, one is to execute kind of a shell command step by step to get to a particular result. And on the right side, there is what the exact same steps would look like when using basically CAS. So you know, a small digression in terms of, in terms of uh, what impression CAS left. I remember I was trying to do this to kind of write my own yet another helper script for, for Yocto. And it, it was just turning into a horrible mess of bash scripts. And then I got a Yocto build uh, like a, a Yocto project with just two lines. It was it, it took two lines of code to execute a build with CAS. So I got the repository and I had to execute CAS build and that's it. Everything just took care of itself and I got the image that the colleague was also working on. And that was the aha moment. Like, wow, this is so simple. Okay, so for conclusion. What CAS does, it, it replaces extra commands with configuration files, right? So we are, you can say that we are sacrificing explicitness for simplicity. <laughs> we are replacing the number of commands that are being executed by putting that information into a config file and then running a single command. And why that is helpful is because if you want to write a readme, then executing a lot of commands is usually something that is more error prone than executing less. CAS config files can be included into each other. And that's great because that serves as an infrastructure for building more, for, for, for simplifying more complex uh, flows. And in vendor customer engineering, CAS was basically used to do the heavy lifting with regards to Yocto setup. It, managed to replace an unmaintainable attempt to have bash scripts simplify the Yocto flow into something which at the same time is maintainable and with a single command allows one to expose themselves to the full complexity of the Yocto build or, or, or the bit bake build environment if that is actually needed. <laughs>